So, yeah, I knew that we wanted to start the, this week with uh, Ar-Rahman. So that's that word right there in the middle in white, Ar-Rahman. And Ibn Arabi talks a lot about the idea that the divine names are all in each divine name. And he ties this sometimes to Dhuna Nuna mystery and says it's one of the six cases of his that the, all the divine names are in each name. And then Ibn Arabi says, he goes on and says that he's seen that all the Jauhar, the gem cores, or everything, all the particles in the creation uh, contain all the particles in creation. And then he speaks uh, about the fractal idea that uh, that everything is contained in the part and the part is contained in the whole and he and he looks at that and so we'll look at right now at this idea of splitting and wholeness wholeness and splitting and so that's kind of the theme for today wholeness and splitting so this name arahman so we first uh, the main uh, the, the main voice for this name is ala arshil istawa that this Arahman is the name which settled upon the cosmic throne. And so settling on the cosmic throne, Ibn Arabi says, if this verse was the only one we had, it would be enough. What he means is that the Rahma, uh, that this kind mercy is the beginning and the end. It's the beginning because it's uh, the beginning of the Nur Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was a prophet before Adam was clay and water. And so being a prophet and he was sent to be the Rahma, this merciful kindness to the, all the worlds. So, and as the pen, the Nur Muhammad as the pen puts a, a mark on the circle and the, that mark is the beginning and the end. So the beginning is with Rahma and the end is with Rahma. And so, Ar-Rahman settling on the throne, if this was all we had, it would be enough. And now if we do splittings, if we begin to split this idea of Rahman, this name Rahman, we end up, we can, there are many ways to split, but we'll start with the Alif Lam Ra. So these are, these are three letters that begin, uh, are the, the cut off letters of the Quran, Alif Lam Ra. And so the A, the L, the R. And so then we have Hamim, the H and the M, Hamim, which is a title for Muhammad. Then there is the dagger Aleph up there, and then the Noon, the N at the end. Now Ibn Arabi will have us read this a little bit differently. He says, first there is the object of knowing, then there is knowing. And this goes against kind of the philosophy and our intuitions and so on, that first comes the object of knowledge and then comes the knowing. And he will show us how, therefore, to read this name, we read it with the noon first, because the noon is the vessel and the womb, because Duna noon, for instance, uh, Jonah in the whale, when he leaves the whale, it's called a second birth. So the whale, the noon, is uh, the ink pot, the whale, the womb. And it is containing everything that is known to be, everything that God desires to be, everything that God gives power to be, by saying be and it is and then has power, everything that is speaking, hearing, and then alive with the dagger alif and then seeing. So the, pr the process is first there is everything known, desired, power, speaking, hearing, living, and seeing. And then there is the alif knowing, the lam desiring. When we desire a thing to be, we only say to it be and it is. Dra, the powering, the pudrat, and then ha is speaking. So the speaking if you look at it this way, the first speech that we give is, yes, you are our cherisher. And meme uh, is what we hear. So what we hear is um, to be and we become. 
Aleph, we have to be made alive. And then Nun, we have to have the vessel in which all of these things will take place. So the vessel then transfers into the concept of these, the projection screen. And so if you see that uh, yellowish line, the Nun, Ibn Arabi always tells us the Nun is is a circle and we only see the bottom half. So we only see this bottom half projected onto the screen. But the puppet that the noon is in the shadow play is a circle. And then the noon has an alif, which is the, a generative force. And so the noon is completely complete. She is complete. She has the vessel womb and the generative alif all in one. So the question of splitting is how this noon gets split and only projects the bottom half into this world. Now the noon is the dawat or the inkpot and the inkpot is the place where all of the material for this creation and this and the cosmos and the and the infinite worlds all of the material is in this ink pot. And the ink pot comes first. And one of the ways to look at it is I, was a, I am a treasure which is concealed, but I love to be recognized. So I created the creation and I introduced myself to them and they recognize me. So first becomes this mist and the mist is where everything comes from. So the ink pot as the mist is the womb, it's where everything comes from, and that comes first. Then comes the, the pen. And so first the ink pot, then the pen. First the Adam and Eve, the clay body called Adam Eve, and then the split, the split into Adam and Eve. And so the fullness of the Adam Eve gets split so that generation can take place. So from completeness, there is a split, and then from split, everything that happens, everything good that happens, all the things that are generated, get generated because of splitting. Now, the actual process of this pen is described, can be described, we talked about last week about the voice, and then that, that the sound are have all of these events happening to them. But besides the sound, we can talk about writing. And so the writing, the first writing that we'll look at then is kun fayakun, be and it becomes. So kun, the B is a K and a U and an N. But in Arabic, the U is not written because it's hidden. So the imperative is three letters, K, U, and N, but as it's written, all you see is the kaf, the k, and the nun, the n. And this is because Ibn Arabi tells us that the wav is hidden inside the n. And he then says it more explicitly, the wav, the, the w, the u, is hidden inside the womb. And so we have the pen is the, has the process of the kaf, which has the insertion of the wav into the nun. And then the kaf, the k, the w, and the n, kawana, and that's takwin, takwin. Kawana is make something to be made or starts to move to be made. So the kun comes, which is the kaf, the wav is inside the, the womb, and then all of the parties involved begin to move. And moving in Arabic is harakat, and that's the word for verbs. So all of the letters become verbalized. And when they become verbalized, they kawana, they begin to make something. And then after they have been verbalized and they have, and they have moved, then they rest they get into sukun, and rest is sukun, which also is the word for surd or consonant. And then we have down here on this corner, kaun. So the kaf, the wav, is an interesting letter. It's called a letter of, it's an illat, 
a, a letter that has weak and strong forms. So it has a form which allows it to slip into the womb, and it has a form that allows it to be out of the womb and to be separated from the womb. And so when it's separate, when it's in the womb, it's u sound, kun, and when it's outside the womb, it's wa sound, kaun. And kaun shows that the W and the N have rested. And so when they rest, they make the word kaun, and the word kaun is the word entity or created being, something that is. So this process starts with the ink, ink pot, and then the pen comes and activates and makes things happen. So in the Quran, we have nun wal qalam wa ma yasturun. So the nun, the N, the womb, with its alif, with her alif, wal qalam, and the pen comes next, wa ma yasturun. And satar is, we have in the back here, a mistara, and that's where if you used to do, um, you have a piece of paper, you, you have uh, rails under it, or you have strings, and you can plop the strings and make the line. So you have, so the way that writing is done is by pressing and by scratching. And in fact, Ibn Arabi says that this scratching sound is what's heard on a night ascension. When you have a night ascension and you go between the puppet and the projector, projecting light, there is a place where all of the pens are scratching and there's this, and you have this tremendous scratching sound in the cosmos. So the nun comes first and then the pen and then what they write and the they, they're meant, you could, what the plural is, because you right now you have two uh, subjects, but you have a, you have a plural. Uh, you could say the nun with the alif and the pen, those three together, what they are, scratching or pressing. Okay. So Rahman, the definition of Rahman is that the womb is a dense ramification of Arahman. So Rahma and Rahim and Rahman, all of them are connected. Rahma, the kind mercy, the Rahim, the womb, and Rahman, the name. And so the hadith is, the womb is a dense ramification of Arahman. And this then turns us to the, our relationships, the, all of these shadows on this, in this shadow play are related. They're all connected, and they're all connected from the womb. And you could say, we are all children of one clay mother and one breath father. And so these wombs are all interconnected, dense, and abundant. And so the first level of reading this is that the, the connections of the womb are, are something that we are told to preserve, to connect the womb relationships and to keep them connected. And in fact, when uh, one of the, one of the, people became the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu came to him and said, what about all of the things I did before Islam, before you came with your message? Uh, the things like freeing the slaves and keeping the relationships close, keeping the womb relations connected. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Aslamta, you did Islam or you performed Islam or you were a Muslim by doing those things. So by doing those things, you were a Muslim or you performed Islam. And so this is the, the concept of keeping the womb connections close. And it, the one level is that you read it on is that you keep these womb levels close. And then there is the, the heart or the seeming threat in the second part of the clause, which is, um, and those who cut the, those relationships, we cut them. God cuts them off. And this is when the Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, if you aren't kind to others, if you don't have rahmah to others, then no rahmah will be shown to you. And so these are the, the, this is the, the threat way of helping us realize the importance of connecting these connections, these womb connections. A second level is that these uh, womb connections 
um, can we can we can miss we can go the we cannot understand what direction we're supposed to go with womb direction with womb connections. If you see this forest of branches, uh, when we're traveling along these womb connections, you know, where are we going? And in a, and so the second way of understanding this this statement is the Arab uh, lineage, the concept of Arab lineage, that the tribes uh, to know where your lineage is was of utter importance, crucial importance. And so on the, then, so Allah has, says that on the day of judgment, I will uh, raise my lineage, my connection, and so put down your connections. And so the second way of reading that is to realize that this is a dense forest, this, this um, meshed kind of connections. Um, we don't really, it's very easy to go astray and not know which direction we're going. And so Ibn Abi reads it then a third way. And that is that we need to see that all of these connections are really the true connection is to our one father. So the father, Adam, Eve, father. And so we are, we need to restore our connection to this father. And so he tells a dream, uh, when he tells a story, he was in Mecca with a small group of people and they had, uh, and someone dreamed a dream for him. So Ibn Arabi says, he saw a dream for me. Because one of the, the key concepts of the, of the true dream is that either you see it or someone sees it for you. And in this case, Ibn Arabi had come to Mecca with his group. They were going to go to the tomb of Adam. And so this, that, was their, that was their intention, that was their desire to see the tomb and visit the tomb of Adam. And so that night, this person has a dream for, for them. And the dream is, that this group, while they're traveling to the tomb of Adam, uh, they suddenly get raised up into the sky and to the heavens, and the higher angelic host is there and greeting them and making their way easy and blessing them. And so Ibn Arabi says he was so delighted that by connecting the womb relation to the father Adam, all of these things could take place. And so he says, we don't tend to understand when the Quran says, Ya Bani Adam, oh, the children of Adam. And we need to re remember that our father is Adam. And he said, even though this is so very distant from us, and he says, but look, even Mary, Maryam, is called the sister of Aaron. And Aaron is, of course, distant in time from Mary, but she's the sister of Adam. So how we, of, of Aaron, so how we connect these things. And then Ibn Abi has a fourth way. He says, what we should do is cut the womb relationships so that our womb relationship will be with Ar-Rahman. So to cut the womb relationship so that our direct connection is to Ar-Rahman. So this is the, the different ways of splitting. Coming from Ar-Rahman, the comprehensive, uh, this comprehensive merciful name, and then the splits into all of these branches, all of these, this mesh of, of branches and ramifications. And then how to recover from this split is to re and how to return to the source is cut these, uh, the, the relationships here in order to have the relationship with, with Arachman. And so this, Splitting, we first, so we saw the first splitting is that look in the mirror. So when the mirror is looked at, uh, then a split takes place because the image is way over there. So if I look at the mirror, my image is way over here. And Ibn Arabi talks about, oh, the image then speaks up and says, um, you know, even though I come from your radiant brilliance, your tajalli, and even though I am square against your image, Still, you are not I, and I am not you. And so there's this split. And one could then ask Ibn Arabi, is, where does he bring us to bring things back together? So how do, you, how do you go from being complete into split and then find a return? The first splitting, another first splitting is of the ears. Ibn Arabi talks about the kun breaks and splits the ear splits the ear and the first split of the mouth is when so the first split of the ear is to hear be 
and we become, and the first splitting of the mouth is when Rab, the cherisher, says, am I not your cherisher? And we say, Bala, yes, you are a cherisher. And we say, Bala, Ba. So that's why some people say the first words that you hear from babies are Ba, Ba, Ba. This is from the first word that they said, you are our cherisher. So the mouth has to be split. We looked at the throat and the mouth, that the sound, the, the, the ah sound from deep inside has to come through the mouth and split and go different places and do different things. We talked about the splitting of the birth canal, the splitting of the birth canal and entering into a new world. And then the grave is also a womb and that grave canal gets split and we enter into a new world. Uh, we have the splitting of the moon. Uh, someone wrote and asked what was Ibn Arabi's uh, discussion of the splitting of the moon. And we'll get into that a little bit at some point. Splitting the heavens and the earth. The heavens and the earth are split, uh, separated. So all the splits and separation is taking place. And then women and men are split halves of each other. This is a, a hadith that Ibn Arabi says is the medicine for men who have sickness in their hearts. The way that their, their medicine is this hadith that the Prophet said, women and men are split halves of each other. And this clay body, Adam Eve, is split to make Adam and Eve so that there's generation that takes place. And when this split takes place, Adam's yearning is for the one who makes him complete, so because he's missing something. Eve's yearning is for where she came from. So Eve's the, the, the Eve love is the yearning for where she came from. So uh, let me, I'll read this uh, statement from Ibn Arabi, a passage here, and then we'll have uh, Baki and Nura, I think, will, will sing us an Allahi soon. And it might not be the one that's on the screen, but uh, it'll be this, you'll, you'll hear what it is. So Ibn Arabi says in this passage, here you will recognize that as God made women beloved to Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so the one women are made beloved to loves the Prophet وسلم, for their sake. So he loves God. And then Ibn Arabi says, I had been one of the creation of God, most disliking women and sex in the first part of my entrance onto this path. I stayed like this for about 18 years until I witnessed this station. A fear came to me about my loathing all of that when I stopped before the prophetic report that indeed God had made women beloved to his prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He did not love them by nature, but rather he loved them by God, making them beloved to him. When I faced God and confirmed with him the truth of this situation, based on my fear of loathing God in the place where I disliked what God had made beloved to his prophet, all of that vanished from me. All praise belongs to God. And he made them beloved to me. Now I am the greatest in creation in experiencing tender compassion for them and the most vigilantly watchful of their persons and their rights. You see, I am in this upon insight and this is based on made beloved, not nature-based love. So I'll mute now. Uh, Baki and Nora, can you sing us the Ilahi? So Becky has a code, so um, Nura will be probably at some point singing it alone. Um, so it's number 30. Okay. Ya Mustafa, O blessed heart, Ya Mustafa, to Medina, O mystic motherhood. Oh, 
Thank you, Nora. Thank you, Baki. Wonderful. So the splitting and the returning of the mystic motherhood, uh, let's look at that because Ibn Arabi uh, very clearly has two kinds of poems in his love poetry. Uh, some are the, are maybe masculine poems and some are feminine poems and this and this is true in in sufi poetry everywhere you can often see which of the two uh perspectives is being taken in the poem and uh and it's based on for ibn arabi says it's based on whether you're looking for what makes you complete and what's missing and therefore you long for it and yearn for it uh that's the adam method or Adam yearning, or it's the one where the feeling of abandonment and have being lost and being left behind and wanting to return to the place of where you came from. And for Ibn Arabi, that's the Eve uh, poetry. And this is, uh, 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 when, you, when you look at, uh, or hear Saraiki poems and Punjabi poems, uh, Hiranja and other, other poems, you often get this feminine one. And uh, like Nusrat Fakale Khan used to uh, sing in this very, very high voice. Uh, it was very feminine, and he sung many of the feminine ones where you're abandoned. Uh, you've, you've been with your lover all night and then you're abandoned. And so you're saying, your eyes are hurting. You're saying, where is, where is the one who loved me? Uh, why have I been left behind? Um, and then, uh, so this this is the this is the idea of split. There's a necessary split uh, for things to happen. But then, what is the feeling of of being split? And when is the return? And how much patience can patience can one have before this return? 
So in the poem that just come, came before this, Ibn Arabi is saying, I had no patience. And that's because you have no patience because you are, you've been this ab abandoned or left behind. You've come from the place behind the screen, uh, from the projector, and you've been split into this screen and you might look in all the branches, that, the, the, that slide of all the branches, you might look and you might find uh, solace there because of all these womb connections that you can find, okay, I'm not alone. I haven't been left behind because I do have all of these connections. But Ibn Arabiya says on the fourth level, no, you don't have any connections. Uh, and so you need to go back to the projector light. And so this is what you yearn for if you have this Eve love. So Ibn Arabi writes this poem, while I was for 20 years a dragoman conveying love, he was embracing my secret soul. I didn't know whom I loved and I didn't recognize any name of his. And I didn't know who this was who compressed my chest until there shone to me her face through her niqab, like a night cloud drifting from the full moon. So this, uh, the drift, the cloud drifting from the full moon is the, the parting of the curtain, the parting of the curtain so that the, what is behind the curtain and then behind the moon, which is the light of the sun, is seen. So the light of the sun is seen by the clouds and the veils being dispersed and being uh, drifting away. And the moon, the illumined moon uh, itself, or him, well, in Arabic, it's him, himself. So the, the moon's illumination himself uh, is another veil because that light is coming from the sun, her, in Arabic feminine. So the drifting away of the veils, the illumination of him, and then seeing that behind the illumination of him is the her, the sun, which is the source, which is the projecting light that made this all of these uh, shadows on this curtain. So, uh, well, I'll, this this one here, this slide here, I I drew it from, in a sense, a, a dream that I I had. I'd been thinking a lot about or having very present in me Ibn Arabi's concepts of of how how this the uh, the distance or the gap or the split between the curtains and the projector and the space in between and and this longing to go through this space in between uh, to come back to where one came from and so, and this uh these like this picture of the veils on the side was like the the clouds drifting across the, away from the moon and the clouds drifting are like these veils drifting, fluttering and, and fluttering, and also drifting and parting. And it was something that I'd had since I was about 10 years old. Uh, and I would have a hum in the ears. And then these, these fabric, this, the screen, uh, would begin to thin. And that's why we talk so much about thinning up the membrane would thin and, and be drifting away. And then I would enter into a place where everything was understood, everything was known. And Ibn Arabi talks about this as that every tajalli, every brilliant radiant light contains within it everything. Everything there is, what is now, what will be and what was, is all contained in each tajalli. And so, just the way every divine name is contained in each divine name, and every particle is contained in every particle. And so the cosmos is contained in the particle, and the particle is the cosmos. And in this branch ramification that we saw, each branch that comes out of a trunk makes another branch which comes out of, with it becomes the trunk, and now there are other branches from there. And each of those branches become trunks, and there are branches out of there. And so this, we are nearer to you, and so in the Quran is we are nearer to him than the uh, jugular vein uh, I was hearing, and we are nearer to you than the jugular vein. So that the path to uh, reaching through these, 
this, these drifting veils to the moon and then to the moon to the illumination uh, from where, the, where that projection is coming from. And so this, this is the idea of splitting and wholeness. And so the wholeness is there, it must split. But while it must split, and Ibn Arabi always is so very confident about this or has no problem with this split because what beautiful things come after the split, um, some of the poetry that he writes uh, and, and much of the poetry that is Sufi poetry uh, in the subcontinent and, other, and elsewhere is poem about this. It's just because it's split and something good is going to happen doesn't mean the split itself is not painful or that there's not a yearning behind the split. So what I'd like to do now, um, I'll check chats or if anything has come up, but we have a, a, a recording that Farida in, in Southern Germany has made for us or made for Tumata and, and she said that we can, we can hear it. So let's listen to that one. And it also has um, a visual to it. So we'll be able to see that. And then, and then we'll probably have uh, a few minutes to address some specific uh, ideas that come up from you. So uh, please uh, have your ideas and questions coming up. Let me see if I can do this now. Okay. That was Farida from Germany. She recorded that and she might not be with us now because she has a meeting with her other musicians <laughs> are meeting right now. So Alhamdulillah. So we have time for uh, some, we've, the first one, one uh, comment has already come up, uh, the path through the veils. 
And so we've talked about that as the, the, the thinning of the membrane. Uh, Ibn Arabi talks about moving from this veil through the barzakh into the place between the curtain and the projecting light. Um, and so that place is where ascensions are made. Those are the mutual meeting places where uh, God says, I, I come down to the third, uh, in the third part of the night to the sky of your world. And so by coming down to the sky of the world, coming down, we then go down ourselves to ascend to this meeting place. So Ibn Arabi says it's geometrically confusing, but we go down and that is we uh, go, go humble, become humble to go down so that we can meet God who's coming down. And so that mutual meeting place is, the, is, the, is between the, the curtain and the projection projector. And so the, the barzakh or the veils, um, so the barzakh is, are the veils. The reason that we love the veils are because that's why, uh, so God has to have these veils in order to see. So to see, for God's self to see God, there, ha there is uh, a projection that ha has to have a screen which stops the light. It's called light blocking. So zulm for Ibn Arabi is light blocking. And then when you can see the light blocking, that's why it's there. So in a sense, so Ibn Arabi has that one comment, you know, even though I am from your radiant tajelli, and even though I am square against your image, still I am not you and you are not me. And so the other way to look at that, as Ibn Arabi always does, is that God's saying, I had to put you, I had to split and put you over there so that I could see you, me. And so to see me, I had to put you away, put you far away to be seen. Um, and so the, the image then uh, is singing, uh, as we just heard, singing, where, when do I come back? How do I come back? And can I come back? And so there's the, these, the sweetness of grace is when the return can take place and then the and the and the shadow play can continue but there are those of us who need a break from the shadow play and need to have that uh, that grace uh, and of return and that's why we sing that's why we whirl and do these other kinds of things so so go ahead and uh, just speak up or, or, or put a chat through. I have the chat showing right now, so I might, I might be able to see if there's anything to say. And there's Mariam and Mariam, we, Mariam Fatima. We talked about that at the Derga, about what the image feels like after it's been imaged. <laughs> so that was, that was something there. Okay, make sure this. Yeah, the root of the word is similar to me. Yeah. So the yeah, so split so fitter is is the splitness that we are. We we have a fitter uh and we say iftar, um aftara, all these different words. So when you split when you eat the food uh at sun sunset, uh you eat the food during the month of Ramadan, that's called splitting. It's called fitr. You're opening or splitting open your throat. So the first thing that you split open is the food that you eat. Uh, at the when the sun is setting uh, at the month of Ramadan. And, and Ibn Arabi ties that splitting into the splitting that we have in our, the first thing that splits our mouth in the garden will be something from the whale. And it sounds a little bit gross. I'm not sure what it's, um, but he's saying, this is what we eat. And uh, so, okay, that's what we eat. So that will split ourselves up. That will split our throat in the garden. And then we've already had our, our throat split by when we answered, yes, you are our Lord. So that required a splitting so that the, the, the throat, which is, was kind of glued together, so it would get split open in a way. And so, and the palate and the tongue, which are locked together, split open and, and sounds then come. Okay. Yeah, so there's the, the idea, the, this, that picture of the ramifications. Uh, the, the hadith is um, that Ar-Rahman is, uh, the, the womb is a dense ramification or a root system of Ar-Rahman which means that Rahman 
is linguistically derived from rahim, womb. And it also means that these relationships that we have, we are all, uh, we all have one clay mother and one breath father. And so Ibn Arabi, on the first level, it's be good to your relatives and keep relations going. And this is because we all come from the same womb. And then that can, the second level is it expend, extends out. That means that since we're all coming from the, the same womb, uh, we all have the same father, Adam, then our relationships are, can be quite physically distant from us. And so he uses the word jarin uh, januban. So that is a distant, distant stranger who becomes your neighbor. And then when he becomes your neighbor, he has rights from you. So you have, he has the right to demand things of you as your neighbor. So in Ibn Arabi is then telling you on the second level, every you see everyone is your neighbor, and then you realize that everyone in the in this shadow play has a right on you. And then the third level is trace your lineage directly to Adam. Go back to Adam and realize that you are, even though Adam seems so distant, and and when uh, and this happens with me, uh, there's when Baki, for instance gives a prayer, she calls for Adam and Eve, and I just keep, and, and then other people who are much closer to us in time, and I keep thinking, Adam and Eve, so far away, so far, and Ibn Abi says, yes, they seem very far away, but you should really see how close they are, and so his desire to go to visit Adam at the tomb was a desire that brought his people up into this dream where they uh, could ascend to the higher angelic hosts. And then the fourth level is, well, uh, cut all of that off, because if God says, if you cut your relations, I will cut you off, uh, that instead of being a threat, uh, now becomes a promise. And the promise is, if you quit relying on the, the shadow play and cut yourself from that, then you will then be directly related to me. And Ibn Abi says, this is why when we, when we pray, we pray with the imperative. We demand, say, God, give me this. And he says, you can't do that to someone who you know, in the sense that if there's, there's a king or a sultan or a great teacher or a great saint, you, it's presumptuous to say, do this for me, get this for me. But since we don't know who, because who is unknowable, is never defined and, un, and known, Therefore, we can say very clearly, give this to me, and then who responds? And then who responds because there's no one else who's connected to you who's responding, and so therefore, who steps in? Okay. Um, and, and just very quickly, I know that a, a, another friend had asked about the, the different ways of thinking, um, the sort of masculine, feminine ways of thinking. For Ibn Arabi, the very positive ways of thinking masculinely and femininely uh, is, is in Furqan, criterion, and Quran, jama, gathering. So Furqan is the ability to split things and to see something that's whole and to split it in order to understand its constituent parts. And this is what we use the Greek analysis, analyptus, analyptus, to analyze. So you cut something down, you split it apart to see it. That's Furqan, and it's a good thing. I mean, this is a criterion. The other way of, of thinking is Quran, which is jama, which is gathering things together, and so think things as a whole. And so these both very positive ways of thinking are what the complete human being wants to be able to engage the criterion, being able to split things to understand, but also the Quran, the Jama, being able to gather things together in order to understand. And again, la ilaha illallah is, uh, is, is, a, is, a, is a kind of knowing which it depends upon a negative. That is, it has to, it has to say, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't. And in Sanskrit, it's the neti neti. So la ilaha illallah, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't, but this is. So it's a splitting. The other way of understanding is the second part of the Shahada, Muhammad Rasulullah. And this is the understanding of completeness, of fullness, of things that of, can hold two things that are contradictory at one time. So if you can hold 
two contradictions at, and hold them together, then you're thinking in a jama or a comprehensively collective way, the Quran way, or the prophetic way. Because how does God laugh when God doesn't have a mouth to laugh with? How does God waver when he knows what's going to go on anyway? So all of these intellectual possibilities are ones that can only be absorbed by the knowledge of contradictions. And so when you look at your own way of thinking, you want to find the balance between criterion and gathering together. And then the negative part of criterion is that it then comes into defining. And that's what the intellect, the akla, wants to do is define and rope in and fence in and say, this is the way things are. And, and outside the fence is something else. Um, and so to, to cure that, and so, and so you say that, and this is the, the sickness of, I'm a man and this is a woman, and men uh, are better than women, on and on and on. And so Ibn Arabi says the medicine for that is men and women and men are equal halves of each other. And so that, that then pushes you out of that negative way of seeing, and you see, oh, these are split equal halves. And then, uh, then to then cure that as well with the ability to see contradiction. And so all of the divine names fall under the name we. So the we is not a royal we, it's the we of the divine names, the plurality of divine names. And they are, some of them are antagonistic to each other. And so the name that brings them together is Al-Mu'min, the one who is safe, secure, Al-Mu'min. And that's because Quran tells us to the Mu'minin, gather together the, antagon and the antagonists. And so bring together the womb relationships which are antagonistic to each other, find them in one place. So, um, yeah, they, so in, in Arabic, it, the moon is, is uh, masculine and the and the sun feminine, and it's um, and so it's it's just it's a wonderful way of of continually to to toss things around and keep things uh, from being stuck in one place, um, and so and then <clears throat> partly I think the reason it's got to be because in in the poetry idea of the moon is that you can't see the sun but you can see the light in the moon and so. The, the moon becomes the beautiful required object of love, the beloved, because what can't be seen directly, you can't, if you can't look directly at the projecting light, uh, you can look at the moon which is receiving that light. And so the moon then, of course, is also very much connected to uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so it's connected as the idea of complete because it's both light blocking and light. So light and light blocking. So the Prophet ﷺ is complete. And so uh, this is one, one way that we can look at this, that these are not any split anymore. This is a complete, this is bringing together. This, oh, die Sonne der Mond. Okay, so in, in uh, German you say die Sonne, uh, the masculine sun and der Mond. The, I mean, the, the feminine sun and the masculine moon. Okay, alhamdulillah. Ah, you will see the Lord like the full moon. And that's, and then the Sufis always also say that if you want to see what God looks like, you look at Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is the, you will see the Lord like the full moon. Yeah, Ibn Arabi does a lot with that. I, I'll have to go into that. So thank you, Tessa. Let's look at those poems next time, inshallah. Okay. So. Yeah, this one that, and Ibn Arabi's point of, when he talks about his, his sort of his, his confession or his fee, or how he felt for 18 years about women and about sex. Uh, it's interesting that he, used, that he says that, that he makes the point that that was his nature and that then he'd learned something different, but that the Prophet told him that his nature, his was also a situation, not necessarily not liking women or anything like that, but that his love for women is, is not nature-based, but it's made to be love-based. And then, and you've really, I, you know, I've been kind of working with that for a while, look, trying to look at in the last few days, this idea of um, 
of completeness and the kun fa yakun, you had the k and the n and you have and they have to be split adam and eve have to be split um, and then you have this fullness this fullness of the prophet and then the question then becomes with the fullness of the prophet how do you then also uh, exhibit uh, male and female and so this might be a way of looking at that but i just also love that way so that ibn arabi says after he learned all of this and it was this tawajja he said when i faced god so he came face to face with god and he said you know since it's the way you told me it is um therefore uh, what what do i need to do and then when he was made when women were made beloved to him he said no one is of more shafaka so no more compassion and tender mercy uh, towards women than he is and no one is more vigilant and looking out for the persons and the rights of women so this week uh, uh, this is telling us why Ibn Arabi is so important for us now uh, as a as a as a way of healing as a way of seeing things in a way in a in a way that we have been very limited before um, and so limiting um, maybe the the, the aql, the intellect limiting and the getting in a situation where um, we we can't see the the whole anymore we can't see what's complete anymore um, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. If anyone has anything to say, I've got a few uh, notes coming through, but please speak up if there's anything. Hi. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam Um, Three things. Um, first one is how did he know, like, when he was talking to God, how did he know it was not his intellect or his ego or his memories and it was God? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, uh, this is the, the quite being able to understand where, where the incoming thoughts are coming from. So incoming thoughts are, um, are for, for most people are for their shaitanic, uh, ego or psychic, uh, angelic or, or huck, divine. And then he says that the prophets and messengers only get three of those. So they they only have three kinds of incoming thoughts. So part of the path, part of the training of the path is to be able to dis, to understand where which where these incoming thoughts are coming from. So so a, these, this kind of identification is part of the training of the path, and this is why the path is uh, requires. Well, first of all, it's a path. It has to have it has to have a road for you to travel along, <clears throat> and you have and you <clears throat> excuse me. So you have to have. Uh, a clear road in front of you and this is the way that you evaluate all things and you train yourself and so for Ibn Arabi this of course this is the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, that whatever happens to you whatever you hear you evaluate it with the, the practice and the life of the Prophet وسلم. so when you evaluate everything with the life of the Prophet then you can be sure that you're what you're of what you're hearing and then you become trained to hear and you begin to see oh that's myself talking and you recognize that quickly and then you can shut that down <laughs> and go on from there but that's why that's that's part of the discipline of the path and there and there can be no undisciplined uh, way of doing this because uh, if because then you don't know where, where things are coming to you from and how you're reacting and then you're a harm to yourself and to others so, so the training mm -hmm. the other thing is um, one of the options to reach Rahma, the, the, to the projector, the light, was to cut, the, cut all the relations. So we are real, directly related to Rahma. Um, does it have, am I connecting this correctly? I'm, I'm trying to connect this to the Hadith, which says, if you pass away, away from your home, you're a shaheed, you're a martyr, or you're, you're a shaheed, you're a witness. Am I making that connection correctly? Yeah, it, it's it's whether if see the, if if you're looking at the your connections and our connections can go all the way to the secondary causes, you know, the things that happen around us. Um, if we rely on them and exclusively rely on them, then it's uh, we might there be a time in our, in our life when you want to cut that off and rely directly on God, and so. Uh, 
so it's it's a it'll it'll be a moment and it'll be a time when you, when you look at, at at what you are casting off and 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 leaving, so that you can then be the direct witness. Um, and so, but and 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 again, you have to see all four of those levels. And so, what when I when I cut off the uh, the womb relation, uh, this doesn't mean that I'm suddenly unkind to people, but it means that I, I'm learning where I'm relying. I'm relying on some somewhere else than on the people around me. Uh, and so, the and so there those the healing and uh, and the and the is something that takes place on all of those four levels, almost all yes. the, at all the ways. Um, I was thinking in terms of when somebody is far away, like so let's say somebody left um, whatever country they're from and they're now in a completely different place and they have nobody to rely on. It may not be their choice, but it is, it is I guess, and if they pass there, according to the Hadith, they will become a witness, right? Right. So it's kind of, uh, it, even though it's not a choice, it kind of brings out the same result, yeah? Right, right. yeah. So when Ibn Arabi talks about this one time, he makes the point that most of the people on, the, on our path, um, they, they are at some time or all the time, they are marginalized, they're not connected. And so uh, they, they, they do not have, they're, they're, they're outcasts, they've been cast out. And so he says most of the people on our path are outcasts, have been have been not connected to the to people are not helping them, people are not uh, accepting them, um, and people are and so so not being when you are in a situation of when you are not accepted, people are not understanding you, are not helping you. At that moment, then you if you're on the path, you then say, uh, is this because I'm like the other lovers and the other uh, who uh, have, we have our own place to go and that we're not going to get solace from the same places that other people get. And this is, you know, these, these, and these shadow plays have drama and, and, and trauma and, and, and all sorts of things happening and antagonistics uh, and enemies and, and so on. And so uh, from one level, uh, we're all connected. We're all from the same womb. Uh, on another level, you know, brothers can and siblings can start fighting, and it's then we have to find our own way. <laughs> one more, last one. Yes, yes. Um, thank you. Um, you said you mentioned the scratching sound in the cosmos during night ascension. Is it the new and fresh creation, the Rahma, being created? At is that it? Yeah. So it, it's so that the Rahma, the Tajali, is coming through. Uh, the recorders and the recorders are scratching the pens, and so, um, so in a sense, the the the, the way the retina re retains things uh, that when light passes through, it leaves a singe. It, it, it singes the edges as it's going through, and the singeing of the edges is the sound of the cosmos, and the it can be a beautiful sound in the sense that you know what's coming through and it's the result of something coming burning through in a way yeah and we've been uh just to go back to this this pressing and 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 scratching into um the word sign or mark is is alama and in and in arabic this means two things and we talked about it, the dobi the washerman takes uh, the shirt and, and marks them and then takes them into a huge pile, goes to the river and washes the clothes and knows where to give back each shirt to each person, to the right person, because there's a mark. So this mark on the shirt is the sign and it's a scratched mark on the shirt. And it's when you, when you go, when you are lifted to an, the other place in a dream or in, in, or in an ascension, then your body stays here and you're lifted here and then when you return to the body no body no physicality could pass through the the veils or the curtain so but what can happen is that the ruh the spirit that you are could have a mark put on it and the mark that's put on it is one that you read when you wake up in the morning so you wake up in the morning and you read that mark and it is is you know you say you tie the string around your finger or you make a mark to remember something so when you're in over there in the ascension or in the dream you say i want to remember this so you make a mark so you won't forget 
And then when you come back to the, your body, of course you forget, but then maybe you don't forget, maybe you see that there's a mark. And by working through that mark, then the memories can come back again. And so that's why you work through your dreams when you wake up in the morning. And then, and then they, they also have a life of their own. And as you work through them, you see more things. And what you thought in the first 10 minutes was, that's crazy, I don't even think I should remember it. But if you do remember, you realize later that was the most important part. So, so watching the mark, looking for the mark on the shirt, <laughs> on, your, on, your, on your spirit, is what you want to be doing there. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Yeah, Omar had said that, made the point, the sign, the mark. It's very, very important because this, that, that's how you see what's done. And so the mark is done on the circle, uh, and then the mark is done on this vinyl thing, and they're scratching, the pen is scratching the vinyl record, and making these marks and making these sounds and scratches. And then on ourselves, so in a sense, we're like this vinyl record that has received all these scratches. And as we look at the scratches, we, we trace them down. So Ibn Arabi says there's an, there's, an, there's an all at once knowledge, and then there is a step by step knowledge. And he says that the divine names use step by step knowledge. So the Quran says, Hatta na'alam, until we know. And it's a very, and the commentators have a lot of trouble with this because it's very confusing. How does God not know everything? So until we know, this means until the divine names have gone through in a sense, the record, and gone through each place step by step by step by step, or sound by sound, then they will know. And this is the difference between a piano where you put every piano key down and you've played every single song in the world uh, versus playing one note and then another note and another note. And so you, if you, when you have this completeness, you need to then split them up and hear each note separately. And so, the sound, the beautiful song doesn't come unless there's splitting. And then, but the splitting itself is sadness because it's no longer complete. And so it's the complete, split, complete, split, complete. Okay. Well, so thank you so much for being here. It's so wonderful. I look forward to this all week and seeing beautiful faces. So <laughs> thank you. Alhamdulillah.